So both of the short films we're looking at this week market themselves really well. This one brags about how it won awards and all that, and that immediately gets your attention. And this one talks about how it was inspired by DayZ. That's actually a pretty good marketing plan right there. You associate your video with a video game that has a really intense built-in audience so you get more views. That's, I mean, that's clever. That's why this short film review is inspired by Minecraft. Come on, kids, let's go on a Minecraft-inspired short film review. Let's, let's do it. So welcome back to another short film review. This week we got a double feature. Not every short film we look at is going to be over 10 minutes long, so if they're a little bit shorter and they, I can find two with matching themes, I like to combine them together and bring you videos like this. So this week we're going to be looking at Alone by Roughneck101 and Out Here by AFM Video Productions. And both of them are post-apocalyptic films. It's a genre that's starting to get popular again in light of, uh, what we're gonna have to deal with this November. Seriously, not not looking forward to that. When it comes to the post-apocalyptic genre on YouTube, most people go with zombies. What I like about these two short films is they didn't go for that. They went for more of the human aspect of the apocalypse. What's it like to be alone? What if you run into other people? What's what will society be like after it crumbles to the ground? I guess we'll find out if Hillary's elected. Seriously. Not not looking forward to that. There'll be no restraint on spoilers in this video, so if you haven't seen these two short films yet, here they are right here. Check them out. Also, link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into the first of these two short films, Alone. So we start off with another normal day at the office when- wait, wait a minute. Is that Tobuscus? That- that looks exactly like Tobuscus. Apparently his name is, uh, Alex Vettinghoff? I, I mean, that's- that's gotta be a pseudonym, right? That's- that, that is- that's totally Tobuscus. Report, sir. Thanks. You want a full reference? Hello? Everyone's dying. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, maybe... Nobody just have a sick sense of humor, but like... Nobody else, like, not see that coming. <laughs> Seriously, just like casually just... Going around the office, dip, 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 dip. Oh, just a casual day here in the normal world. Oh, a phone call for my wife. We're state of course! We are dead! We are all dead! I think you have the wrong number. Baby, please. Dream flashback of darkness, then redness, then whiteness. I had that dream again. The one with the Teletubbies or the one where everyone died? When everything was normal. People working, people laughing. How much do you think Arm and Hammer had to pay for that product placement? The dude reaches past four perfectly good tubes of Colgate, and three opened but not finished tubes of Crest. But still, he is not satisfied. In this post-apocalyptic world, he wants the best for his teeth. Seriously, is the dude alternating toothpaste from day to day? Has he finally snapped? Am I nitpicking here? I mean, probably. Did you guys even know Arm and Hammer made toothpaste before this? I didn't. Learn something new every day, I guess. I don't know. Years ago, when it all seemed, well, before it all went hey, to Hey, uh, I think, think you missed a spot. You missed a kill something. So our protagonist continues to narrate as he makes himself a makeshift breakfast. It's funny, that old saying. You never know how much you love something until it's gone. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. You know. That old saying. I think it won a Grammy. And we get even more of our main character's Captain Log. You also see him listening to old messages from his wife. You know, the one, the bearer of bad news from earlier. Babe, I was just thinking of you. Maybe once you're done work, we could go pick some apples. Janice said it's the perfect time of year. Most to do of it. all. Oh my gosh, are you narrating you over me? Ones. Just want to go apple picking. I love you. Now you're End of message to erase. Message will be saved for three days. Thank God that I found a house with a well, a generator. Upkeep is a pain, but definitely worth it. I wish I could say the same about all this voiceover. Now if only I could find the time to get that thing running again. Definitely speed up collecting food and supplies. It's also a lot easier on the feet. Jump cutting is also a super efficient way to travel. Come on, don't act like you can't do it. Somerset Drive. Well... I went left yesterday, so maybe I'll go right for a change. All right, 
on it, this right here actually feels like the first necessary use of voiceover. Throughout all the rest of the film, you can deduce what is going on and what he's feeling through visuals. You can tell he misses his wife, you can tell he's low on supplies, you can tell he's the last person on Earth, all through visuals. But this spot right here actually gives us some new information that isn't redundant, that actually adds to the story and adds to his character. On one hand, it says he's been around the block a whole bunch of times. Like, it, the apocalypse has happened a long time ago, so most of the neighborhoods have been cleared out, he's explored a lot of all that's had to be explored. But at the same time, there's an attempt there to kind of shake up the routine and all the monotony of it all. You simultaneously get the feel for how bored he is and how kind of dull everything is, but then he's trying to make the most of it. He's trying to create some kind of adventure with this. Even if it's half-hearted, he's trying to shake things up a little bit. Personally, I think this short film would have been a lot better if this was the first use of voiceover in the entire film. I've got nothing against voiceover, just redundant voiceover that just kind of got me on this one. The reality is, it's just me. A guy with a business degree. I don't know why I survived or what I should be doing. Maybe I'll start a YouTube channel. Thankfully, all the zombie theorists were wrong. Wait, wait, wait. so just, just clarify here. The zombies didn't happen. So then what did happen? Where did everybody go? Alien invasion? Was there a plague that hit through here? Was the rapture? Did everyone just kill themselves after the Ghostbusters reboot? Seriously, what what happened? Why, where'd everybody go? What it, what was this apocalypse that we were in the post of currently? What, what happened? Oh man, this doesn't look too good. Oh, whoa, they got Welsh's grape jelly up in here. Let's do it. So Tobuscus continues wandering around, talking about all the people he misses and how his voice sounds weird. And he comes across a survival kit that this family left behind. Money. The only thing that's good for now is starting fires. Yet another unpopular State of the Union address. It's getting dark. Better head home while there's still some light. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to use your safety torch. Put it on your body, the safety torch. In all seriousness, this next bit's kind of cool. I'm just gonna let it play out. I walked a lot farther than I usually do. I've been doing that a lot lately. You'd think I'd be more careful, but when you're the only one left in the world, danger isn't. What a twist! Why, why is, why are credits rolling? That's it? Even though I definitely wanted more out of this short, what we got was pretty decent. For those of you who are wondering about the awards thing, it won two awards in a film festival for sound design and cinematography. And from what I saw, yeah, it clearly deserves the award in those two categories. The story, on the other hand, <sighs> I like the twist ending. It kind of reminded me of that, like, the world's shortest horror story. The last man on earth hears a knock at the door. But the narration just, it kind of killed it for me. It made it feel more like a memoir than a movie. And I get it, you really want to hammer in this guy like, woe is me, I'm the last person on earth, I'm so lonely, I'm so alone, and then there's another person and you're terrified. But I feel like there's a better way to do that. It just feels lazy to have it as, oh, the characters just kind of turn to the audience and be like, here's everything that I'm feeling. You don't have to do any work we're gonna spoon feed you all this information. I don't know, this just kind of goes back to the death of the author thing where you really want your audience to kind of be involved in your work and let them, and just kind of force them to figure stuff out. Because it's not that hard to follow. I mean, if I had this on mute for most of the time, I think I could have followed the story pretty well. And again, visuals and sound design are really well done. There's some really cool looking shots in here. All of its problems aside, I think it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it already and if you're not bothered by the fact that I just spoiled the whole thing. You should have seen it before Hand, but if you didn't, it's still worth checking out. I, I enjoyed it. Now let's get to our second video in the double feature, which is Out Here by AFM Video Productions. This next video was directed by Alessio Moriello, who is this guy who I went to elementary school with at Laguna Blanca. It's not going to affect the way I look at this, but I, I mean, it's, it's cool to see people I know doing stuff like this. Just, just kind of neat. So we get the opening credits which is them, as we get news footage of when the world started to go south. And we see our main character getting ready to travel across the countryside. And seriously, man, that is a, that is a good shot right there. <laughs> seriously, for no budget, that's absolutely beautiful. Granted, you'd be hard pressed to find a better looking place in the US than the California Central Coast. But seriously, just the coloring in that shot is just gorgeous. That's not even a word that I use, gorgeous. So we see our main character drinking a delicious, refreshing Sprite. Sponsor! When suddenly this this guy shows up. How many rounds do you have in there? Easy, kid. What? Easy, kid. It's a good line reading right there. Easy, kid. What? I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. 
This is what you're looking for, right? I've got a container full of these and I've got food. Lots of food. I'll give it all to you if you promise not to shoot me. Promises me nothing out here. My dad promised me acting lessons and look where that got me. He could kill you and take everything you own. You could, but I can help you. You look like a tourist to me and I know these parts well. Oh, oh really? Was it my I Heart Santa Barbara t-shirt that gave me away? So our main character agrees to give this guy ammo, food, and directions in exchange for not getting shot. I mean, seems like a fair trade to me. In all seriousness though, that is a cool drone shot right there. It's only a second, but it, like it adds a lot. It really opens up the world. See all young filmmakers out there, if you got the extra cash, go ahead and invest in a drone. Seriously, it helps you establish shots, helps open up the tone, helps you fight Islamic terrorism, it helps, it really adds production value to your film. So these guys bond over a meal later that night. You've been hungry for a while? Haven't eaten in two days. Got any water? Yeah, but I got this Gatorade bottle filled with horse urine. Will that work? Not much, but tomorrow we'll hit an area with a well in it. If you don't mind me asking, what's up with the bear? My little girl's out at the airfield. I haven't seen her in too long. When this world turned sour, I wasn't around to protect her or comfort her. I just need her to know her father loves her. Also, I retire in two days. Also, my long lost brother who runs a motorcycle gang and is looking for me. And is it actually dark out here? Or is that just all the ominous foreshadowing blocking out the sun? It's getting hard to tell right now. So they get to the well the next day and they discover a hostile group of survivors there. I'm guessing this is where the Daisy part of it comes in. Hey! We just need some water and we'll be on our way. We were here first, asshole. Yeah, Jesse Pinkman came all the way from Brooklyn for this water. Asshole. It's an interesting accent you went with. And then a really well choreographed fight scene breaks out. Seriously, like the whole thing, it's really well put together. Some really solid stunt work here, guys. Well, I mean, it's all great except for, well, this part. Let's get the hell out of here. Wasn't there another guy? What? Okay, that's a cool shot and all, but are you saying this guy ran away from the fight and then came back after all his friends were dead just so he could spitefully shoot this guy? I don't know, it just seems a little contrived. Other than that though, this whole scene is fantastic. Oh, and also, that guy's dying now. <coughs> don't, don't get blood on it. Even though I've given this guy a really hard time for all the acting in this short, this one line, this one moment right here is actually really well done. Just kind of establishes that this guy cares more about his daughter getting this bear than he does his own life. It's kind of like he needs to know that his girl is going to get this like reminder of how the world used to be and this little comfort and he can't have any blood on it, can't have anything really upsetting that image of what the world was and what it can be again. I don't know, there's a lot of subtext to that line to the way it was delivered and I, I like it. It was a cool scene. So of course he's dead and we end off on this shot of our main character delivering the bear to the little girl. There's nothing over the top, there's no screaming, there's no crying, it's just it's really subdued. And you know what, it's it's not spectacular but I, I feel like it did enough. It didn't need to be like this big dramatic emotional thing, it just, the girl has the bear now. This guy wanted the girl to get the bear. Now she's got the bear, and it's cool, and it's touching. That's a nice way to leave off the short film. All in all, this is a really well-put-together short. Got really good cinematography, really good fight choreography. Seriously, that fight scene alone is probably worth at least taking a quick look at the video. And it's got good sound design, too. It was kind of lacking in the acting department, and I, I'm not gonna lie, the story was a little paint-by-numbers. Pretty much as soon as they mentioned the bear thing and, like, how I really gotta get this to my girl, like, you're pretty much counting down the seconds before this guy got killed. But, I mean, even though it didn't really like blow me out of the water with the originality. It was still a really solid, well put together short film. I had a good time watching it. Aside from Tell, which is still my favorite short film of all time, I th would say this is the second best short film that I've reviewed so far. I put Chosen right after that, and then Alone, even though I really like it for what it could have been, I feel like Chosen was just the better put together short film, so Alone is at the bottom. Here's the leaderboard. I imagine Alone's not going to be at the bottom for long because it's not that it was bad, it's just it's the least of 
all these films I looked at. I'll get into some bad short films soon enough, guys. Don't worry about it. Those were the two post-apocalyptic short films that we looked at. What do you guys think? Are you going to check them out? If you have checked them out, what do you think? Comment below. Let me know. I know I've been trying to avoid saying that because I know it's Jeremy John's thing, but just that catchphrase that just rolls off the tongue so easily. Comment below. Let me know. Seriously, though, I want to hear your thoughts. Your comments are awesome. And that'll do it for this video. So until next time, God bless and stay saucy.